Welcome back to another Golf Car Leadership School. Today, Travis Baldwin, our warranty administrator, interviews John Fugit, the founder and CEO of Inprint Graphics here in Springfield, Missouri. So I know a little bit about the company because I've yeah. known you for quite a few years, yeah. but tell us a little bit about Inprint or even your background too. Yeah. Maybe how you get into it. So, uh, the way I started the company, I was actually a senior in high school uh, at 18 years old. And I would get out of school at about 11 o'clock. Um, and I started going to Chamber of Commerce meetings. And the first one I was scared to death and I went and I left. <laughs> and then the second one I went back and the guy asked me for an iced tea because they th thought I actually worked at the restaurant because I was only 18 years old. And I told him I was actually there for the meeting, the business meeting. Uh, he felt terrible, and then he ended up buying signs. So it, it worked out nice. in my favor. Uh, but I literally did. I started as an 18-year-old kid as a senior in high school, and uh, to this day, people still remember that. And wow. so we've we've been in business since January 1 of 1996 is when I started. Okay. And I was in my parents' house for about a year, and then I signed my first lease at 19 years old uh, here in Springfield. And I was at that location for about 10 years, and then we moved to where we're currently at, uh, off West Sunset here uh, for about 15, 16 years, but mm -hmm. we've been in business now uh, 27 years, and uh, you know I tell people this, and it ages me, but I'm I'm 46 years old now, and and I tell people I said you know I'd never touched a computer, uh, I'd never done anything like that in mm -hmm. high school because we still had typing classes <clears throat> and computers were not even out really much yet. They were, but right. they were not, and so. Uh, I had teachers that would not allow me to take computer courses. We had one, but they said my math was not high enough. So that was always kind of a joke now that we laugh about <laughs> that because I use math every day. Uh, but I have zero college degree. It was just something that I just kind of fell into. And I just knew I was not going to go to college. And it just wasn't for me. It's College is great, and I, I don't bash that, but it's not for everyone. Yeah. And and so for me, it just wasn't. And I was ready to get out and just take on the world. So That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, printing design business seems to be a super competitive industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, throw a rock and you'll hit a printing company. Yes. So, um, how do you continue to grow and do well? You've done it, yeah. but how do you find, what do you find that helps keep you to be a front runner in the field? Oh, that's easy. Uh, <laughs> wow. That's an easy question, actually. Um, and I know that's challenging for a lot of people. Uh, so, for us, uh, I stay on the cutting edge. Uh, we update our equipment uh, about every three to five years. And then I'm always looking for the latest thing. So I'm constantly researching our industry. Okay. And I'm saying what's hot, what's new, you know, what's out there, what are people not doing. And then I also constantly take on a challenge. So we had a situation with SAP Design where they had a graphic that they had going on for a school in Lebanon. And it's this huge graphic. It was probably 60, well, about 40 feet by 80 to 100 feet long okay. in the gym. And this was before they knew us. And they, they had a situation where a company they had hired, it was a sign company, they bailed on them. So then they had to go through two more companies to find somebody to fix it. Well, somehow a builder referred them to us. Right. So we walked in there. I didn't know much about the project, but I just looked at it. And I told them, I said, hey, this should be no problem. I think we can match this and we can make this happen and this, that, and the other. Well, I walked away and my team at the time that was with us, our creative team, looked at me and said, how are we going to do that? I said, I don't know yet, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that right there is what makes us different because okay. most companies will stop at the challenge. They'll look at that and go, yeah, we can't do that. I'll see you later. And then just walk away. And I look at it and say, yeah, we'll try it. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. I mean, let's spend some time on it, put some effort in it. I think we can do it, but if we can't, we'll let you know and we'll be honest. Um, that's the other thing we've always done. We've always just been honest. I mean, if we, we tell you we can do it, we're going to do it. If we tell you we can't, we can't. And, and the other thing in that is we've positioned ourselves in a way that with the equipment, the printers that we have, they're the latest technology that's out. I don't have a printer in the building that's older than four years old. And oh. we just purchased three new ones that are literally brand new on the market through Epson. They have, we were, I think, the fifth one to be installed in the whole United States uh, of some Epson printers wow. that are a new ink set. So with that, I can tell people we, we've done some certifications that are called G7 Master, and it basically allows you to really no color so because of that I tell people like Bass Pro and and Choice Hotels is one of our large clients and NASCAR and Kansas City Royals I say hey Kansas City Royals you've got your blue that you know is your color well because we're G7 I know I can hit that color it's right. a certain process you go through um, and I tell them if I can't hit it no one can because that means my printers cannot hit that color gamut 
So if I can't do it, nobody can do it because I've got the latest equipment that's out. I've got the biggest color gamuts. I've got the nice. latest ink, the whole deal. So if I can't hit it, I don't know who can. Um, so that's a very big advantage for us. So a lot of the companies, especially here in Springfield, they've got old equipment. So that's, I understand it's hard to keep up with that, but there's a risk. Right. There's a risk and a reward. So right. I've taken okay. the risk to put the investment, but there's a reward too. Okay. And growing the business, Good. so it keeps us on cutting edge. So on risk, so I'm yeah. sure you've taken some risks. A few that uh, <laughs> sounds like it. Yeah, um, that didn't pan out. Yeah. So what did you learn from that? So like your yeah. fails, what, or, yeah. or or how did you process and learn from that? The failures are tough. <clears throat> um, everyone's going to go through it. So in 27 years of business, I I tell people this: in 27 years of doing this, I've almost lost this company twice. Um, meaning I almost sank it. And when you do that, you learn from that immediately. Right. You say, okay, well, I'm never going to do that again. Uh, one example was uh, we bought the biggest printer that uh, was in Springfield. It was a 16-foot printer to print billboard wraps and banners and all this. I bought it right at the end of 2007, and so it was 2008. And it was right at the end right. of December, about this time of year. And we had it installed. It was December 21st, and then 2008 hit. Right. And if anyone remembers 2008, that was when Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, all that stuff, the right. housing market crashed. Well, for about six months, I was literally calling my own phone to see if it was ringing because it wasn't wow. ringing. <laughs> and I had just put a $300,000 debt on this business. That printer cost me $300,000. And I had taken a loan from the bank to do that. Um, right. So I learned from that. I'm not going to purchase equipment anymore. I'm going to lease equipment. Meaning that if something like that were to happen or, or, or something really bad like COVID or whatever it may be were to hit and I had to get rid of that printer, I could technically offload that printer. It's going to hurt credit and it's going right, to hurt us, right. but it's not going to bury me. Right. The second was uh, a situation we had where we had, been, we had basically been scammed through a credit card transaction. Um, a guy had told us he was a pastor. He was buying a bunch of banners uh, and we were selling them to him and the cards are running and everything's great. Uh, about two weeks later, I get a call from the credit card company, and they said, hey, there's about $40-something thousand you guys have run. And I said, yeah, this is for Pastor so-and-so. And they said, no, it's actually for Susie so-and-so. Uh, it's a stolen card, so we're going to take that money out of your account tomorrow morning. Oh, Well, I didn't have $40,000 at the time because we had right. spent it on bills, payroll, and everything <clears throat> right. else. Um, so you think, well, what do you learn from that? There's not much you can do in that situation, um, but it's one of those situations that we wow. we just learn to really kind of dissect our customers a little better <laughs> right. to say who is this really uh, is this really pastor so and so and is it, you know and it's nice. tough yeah. it's tough um, but it's something that you just have to learn from but you you just get in and and just put the grid in and just get moving right. i mean that's all you can do to get back on top so okay wow wow um, you talked about new technology yeah. um, so do you have vendors that partner with you that, that are pitching the new technology to you? Is this something that's all your they, research? They do, but typically I do my own. Um, mm. I found that it's really sad, and I don't know if any, I don't know if every industry is this way, but I feel like it would be. And and I understand, I understand you're going to have salesmen. I get it. We're mm -hmm. all salesmen. You know, everybody's selling everything. Is what I tell our team here. I say, hey, you may be hanging windows, but. And, you know, a window graphic. But as you're hanging that window graphic, the customer is asking you, well, how do you do that? Well, exactly. that looks really cool. And well, this is really neat. Well, as soon as you start telling them, well, we put it on this way and this is how we do it, you're selling them that window graphic because <laughs> now they want more. Right. So I said, you're a salesman. So I said, you, you got to be able to sell um, anything. And so in doing that, the vendors, a lot of times, they're great salesmen. Hey, here's a new printer and it'll do X, Y, Z. Okay, well, will it do this? I don't know. Well, will it print this fast? I'm not real sure. <laughs> so most of the time they don't know. Right. So I start, when, when I know that a lease is coming up on my printers, we usually do about a three to five, depending. Um, when I know a lease is about a year up, I'll start researching a year ahead. Yeah. And I start looking at new printers. I start looking at new technology and what's it do differently. And what's it, so by the time it's here, I've literally had multiple uh, technicians when they show up, I know more about the printer than they do. And they're the tech. Like, I literally, on their new Epson, I showed a guy, I said, man, this thing ought to print. I said, it's a new model. I said, surely it would print the remaining length of material and all this on the printer before you unload it, right? And he's like, nah, it doesn't have that feature. And so in about five minutes, I started searching the <laughs> menu, and I said, well, there it is right there. And he goes, man, I didn't know it had that. And I said, well, <laughs> I've watched 20 YouTube videos on this. <laughs> yeah, I know it does. <laughs> and so, and it's, not being it's not being cocky, but it's just knowing your equipment. Right. You've got to understand 
if you're in business for yourself and you're going to lead this team, you got to know what you're doing and know what you're talking about. And so my team, I always want to know, I don't want to say I want to know more than them, but I do. Right. I want to know. I can run any, and I don't. I don't run any of the equipment in here, and I haven't done it for several years, but I can. You if know I how. need to run back and run right. the flatbed, I could go back there and run it all day long and just go. And these guys know it because I've done it a few times. Right. When we're in a pinch and guys are sick or something happens, right. it's like, hey, i got to pick up the slack. Um, and that's another reason I want to know. Yeah. Because I, I tell our team, I say, hey, just because I'm the owner doesn't mean that I can't get in here and get with you guys and get moving. Right. I, I tell them, the way I lead is I tell them, I say, if we were in a boat and we're rowing, I, I'm going to be right there. And, I, and as I see you getting tired, I'm going to tell you to get up and I'm going to take your position and I'm going to row. I'm not going to stand at the front and say, hey, keep going. we we got to get to the end here. I'm not going to do that. That's not my my style. Um, I jump right in there and row with them. And okay. I tell them to take it easy and I'll row with you. I'll pick up the slack. And then when I get tired, someone else is going to jump in my place. Okay. Um, so that's, that's kind of how I do things. That's good. And it's panned out really well. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like, so um, I once heard a business consultant say, actually, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a business can get too busy focused on the competition and lose focus of their own company. Yes. So it sounds yeah. like you've kind of modeled that. I do, man. I, you know, I've had mentors. One of the best things I ever did is, or have ever done, I guess I should say, um, is grab mentors. And what you guys are doing as a company here is very powerful. I mean, I've got a few things to say, and maybe they're good, maybe they're not. But, <laughs> but you'll get nuggets, is, as I call it, from, from people. And I've had mentors in my life. And I started that probably that process probably about 10 years ago. Okay. And what I do is I, I usually grab somebody that's 10 years ahead of me. So I say, okay, well, you're, I'm 46, so I look for guys that are in their mid-50s to 60s. And then I go to them with challenges. And I say, hey, can I, can I take you to breakfast? Can I take you for coffee? I, I've I've known known this to be true, and I've heard it, and you hear this a lot. If you ask someone for help, they'll help you. If you just say, hey, you want to go to coffee, or hey, you want to do this, they may wonder why. Like, are you trying to sell them something? But if you say, hey, can I take you to coffee? I, I've got some questions about business I really need to ask you, and I know you're you're doing well. To be transparent. I would again. love to talk to you about it. And it, I've never had someone tell me no. They mm-hmm. always are, yeah, let's go. And I will pick up nuggets from that. And because I know, well, they've been in my position, you know, well, they've nice. been down this road or they've turned that corner and they've grown and they've marketed and, you know, but I, I, I learned a long time ago and it's, it's hard for all of us. Um, and I would even say it to your team, you know, don't worry about the competition. I mean, it's hard. It, it's hard because right. we all think, man, they have a big building. Ah, they've got new trucks. Oh man, they're putting up this huge sign. I just drive by and go, well, good for them. Right. We're doing something over here. I, you know, I, I can't worry about it because it can really, it can really sink you and almost right. put you in kind of a not depression, but it can start kind of putting you down this downward spiral. Like, it's almost like the comparison game. You know, you say don't right. try to compare yourself, and it says that in the Bible, even talking about not to compare and be jealous, and you can literally start declining. And I've done it to myself, where I think, man, I'm just getting down on myself, and I go, what am I doing? And I say, the Lord's blessed me with what I have. So I'm going to take the printers I have and maximize what I can do that's good. with what the resources that I have. And that's what we've done. That's good. So that's created good. a niche. <laughs> um, how would you, and you've touched on it, but how would you describe your leadership, your leadership style? Yeah. You've had, I know, several staff members you've had yeah. over the years. Yeah. And they want to stay here. Yeah, they do. You know, it's it's they don't leave often. You don't yeah. have a turnstile. Yeah. So describe your leadership a little bit. It's tough because I, I'm... I'm more of a soft person, <laughs> or I'm more of a, I want to be your friend, right. uh, and that's good, but I've got, you right. know, Julie on my team, who is great, and she's our uh, chief operations officer, and we love Julie, and she is awesome and amazing, but she's more of my hammer, mm-hmm. and I know that sounds kind of funny to say, but she's the hammer, so when things go whatever, and it needs to be addressed, I come to her and say, hey, Julie, we need to get this done, and she's like, on it, and she's <laughs> the one that will sit down and say, we don't like this, and here's why. <laughs> Nice. And, and everyone needs that. Right. I mean, every great leader I've talked to has said, you're not the hammer. You're, you're, you're the good cop, the not the bad man. cop. You're yeah. the good guy, and that's great, and that's awesome. And you people love you, and your team loves you, and you can talk to them, and that's awesome. And I can be you know, assertive if I have to, right, and right. I can, everyone can do it. It's just not my forte. It's not my gift. And, and they've said, you need to hire someone that is, that's their that. forte. And, and you say, you go to them and tell them what you need and how you nice. want to see the direction of the company go. So good, that's, that's kind of how I do it. Um, so your your team, so obviously you guys have tons of projects going. Yeah. Um, 
and you have your different departments. How do you keep your the whole company mm -hmm. on the same page mm -hmm. and motivated for the, in the same way? Uh, software is one. So we use uh, an industry software called Serious Software that keeps all of our orders in the system, and then we print work orders and job orders and jackets, and then we have a morning meeting every meeting for about or every morning for about fifteen minutes. So every day, yeah. Every, every day, we do it about fifteen minutes in the morning. Uh, now is that all departments included? Everybody, yeah. everybody in the company is there, and so we run what's called a WIP, which is a work in progress report, and it shows every order we have in the system. So for us, we have anywhere from on average, it's usually eighty to about one hundred and forty orders in our system at all mm -hmm. times, um, which is a lot. <laughs> right. It's a lot, but also within those orders, maybe you know twenty items, or it could be a James River Mints conference that is, well, that's one order, but there's, but there's 85 items in that order. Right. So there's a lot of items to go in that order. So we do have to stay very close niche. And and I encourage guys to give us, and, and gals on our team, we have a lot of women on our team, and I say, hey, I want you to give me ideas. I mean, give me thoughts. If, if you see that we're hemming a banner and grommeting a banner, and you go, you know, I have a faster way, throw it at me. I mean, I, these any one of our team members can tell you that I've bought multiple tools and multiple things to improve a system. Mm -hmm. If I see a better way, or if there's a way to make it go faster, I will buy the tool, I will buy the system, whatever, let's just do it. Okay. And a lot of my team members have come to me and given me that through the years. I mean, we've picked up nuggets, again, as I call them, from several team members, where they've said, hey, I see you guys do it this way, but have you ever thought about going this direction with it? And I go, yeah, that's, that's genius. Why were we doing it this way before? Right. Buy that, and let's go that way. <laughs> I mean, because it's genius. You know, right. I go, yes, it's awesome, man, let's do it. And so our team is very... I always tell them to think outside the box. I go, you can't, you know, everything we do here is custom. And, and I'm assuming, I know with the golf cart thing, people come to you with custom stuff. And right. I want to retrofit my golf cart or they may want to wrap it or whatever it right. may be. And you guys have to think outside the box of, well, how are we going to do that? You right. know, how are we going to make this look this way? And so it's, you, you need everybody on the team to participate in that. So so being the different departments, do you ever have conflict within the department? Like um, sales against... Right. Or, you know, we have, yeah, we have. I think everyone deals with that. Um, our biggest challenge, our, our biggest challenge, I would say, for the conflict side is we have, it's usually sales and production. Because they feel like, well, sales wrote the order, and then the order says this, <laughs> and then I'm supposed to do this, and it doesn't really pan out from what right. sales said. And so we look at it and say, well, we're not in production, so you guys, <laughs> we wrote it the best we could, and you know how it's made, so you should be able to make it. You know, and production looks at it as, well, we're in production, and you tell us to read the work order and do it exactly the same way. And right. So we're reading the work order, and it tells us to make it that way. <laughs> and the guy wanted 18-inch wheels, but, you know, we were supposed to know it was 22-inch rims. I don't, right. You know, on your, Whatever I don't know, right. golf cart, yeah. you know, so you think, okay, here we go. So it's kind of this, like, thing. And we tell them, we say, guys, look, we're not production against sales and sales against production. We're all on the same team. Right. And we have to constantly come together on that sometimes and remind everyone, like, because it is a constant. It not is. constant, yeah. but it can be. And, and frustrations can get out of whack. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing I've learned from that is communication. It's all communication. And, and it's hard because as you lead a team, you know, you've got, you think, okay, we've addressed this issue four times already. Yeah. Why are we still talking about it? You know? Um, so what I've done is I've tried to get the team together and say, guys, look, and gals, <laughs> let's all talk it through. Let's hash it out. <laughs> right. Hey, and we've had some heated. I mean, we've had some I'm things sure, that are yeah. like, well, I was doing, you know, great. Let's all hash it out. And then I just say, okay, well, here's how, how can we do it? And then they say, well, I would do it this way and this way. And then what I do, what I do is I say, okay, everybody understands. Everybody's on the same page. If we're shipping a roll of, we had this not too long ago, about a year ago. You know, we were shipping rolled graphics, and they kept getting damaged in shipping. They would get bent, and things would get damaged. And they were frustrated. We're frustrated, and we're right. like, man. So I said, all right, let's all sit down. Let's talk about it. Let's come up with a system. So and we said, we're going to roll it this specific way. We're going to roll it in foam. We're going to do that, you know. And we all said, yes, that's the way to do it. I said, okay, d good. We're done. We're squash. We're never talking about this again. <laughs> that's the system, right? And we're like, yes. I said, okay, because if someone else brings it up and says, well, so-and-so packaged it this way and did it that way. We're all going to talk again, and it won't go well that time. Right. <laughs> that time, yeah. it won't go good right? because we're going to say, we all left this room, remember, saying we all agree that that's what we're doing. That's good. Um, and that's where the little bit of the hammer in me comes out of, hey, if we all walked out of this room, we're done. Like, I walked out of the room, 
I'm done. Because the salesman in me right. says, if I shake your hand, Travis, and it's a deal, it's a deal. Right. And if it hurts me or not, it's a deal. I shook your hand, told you I was going to do it. So if that's where a little old school gotcha. in me is. If I shake that's your good. hand and yeah. tell you I'm going to do it, if it's going to hurt me, I'm still going to do it because I shook your hand and told you I would. Okay. And that's how I feel when we leave this room. It's like when we leave this room, you said it. So we all understand it. Well, it's, it's in I, concrete. <laughs> and I think you have an all the department come together yeah. as often as you do, especially. Every week, yeah. It's probably... Huge. A big piece of that because they understand each other yeah. until it becomes, before and, it becomes a big deal. Yeah, it is. So. It is a big deal. And I'm telling you, the Foodie Fridays, I'm telling you, the Foodie Fridays for us was huge. And there's another piece to that I can tell you that we started doing a little bit. Um, and it, it's kind of funny. And I got this tip from another friend of mine. And he said, hey, he was the one that did the Foodie Fridays. It was Maurice Flooring is who it oh, was, yeah. Rick. Great guy. And he said, you know how I do mine? I said, no. And he said, well, he, d- he can't do it every week, of course. But he said uh, how it started was he said when vendors would come in and say, oh, you should buy this kind of flooring and you should buy this. Is Rick Moore, you know, is the owner in? And he said, I told my girl at the front desk to say, hey, the only way that they can talk to me is if they buy our entire team lunch. I said, that's a good idea. So I took the same thing. So when they come in, I have Katie at our front office here. I have Katie tell them, say, hey, John will give you 20 minutes of his time, undivided attention, totally sit down and talk to you. Not going to guarantee he's going to buy something or not, but the only way you get to see him and do that is if you buy our entire team lunch. And some of them are like, yeah, we can't do that. They roll away. Well, that would have been a waste of my time. Right. You see what I mean? And the ones that are like, yeah, we want your business. What do you like, barbecue, Chinese, what do you want? And they'll come back in the next day or a couple of days, and they'll bring us all food. And I'll sit down with them. And typically, those guys have earned my business because I right. say, hey, you you care for my team, I'll care for you. They're investing in the You're investing to... in it. Because yeah. we have vendors that we spend several hundred thousand dollars with a year, and, and they'll bring us food a few times a year, <laughs> you nice. know? And it's a nice perk, and it's a nice perk for our team, and that yeah. kind of thing. So good, 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 good. Um, so, what do you think are some of the most important attributes of a leader? What makes them successful? Um, whether it's you or whether others that you see, what are some some of the key attributes? I mean, everyone. It's hard. I mean, that's a little bit of a hard question, but it's because I think everyone always goes to the same answers. Well, invest in your people. You right, know? right. Give them, you know, build them up. And you build a, you take someone and try to build the leader. You know, everyone says the same thing. And, and I get that. And I and I follow, like I told you, you know, Grant Cardone. And I follow some other guys that are pretty Craig powerful. Rochelle, you Craig Rochelle. Craig Rochelle. And there's, right. right. I mean, we, we even did a transformation table, which is, uh, I'm trying to think his name right now. But it, he's, uh, it'll come to me. But we did a transformation <laughs> table with a guy that's a huge leader. Uh, that did a deal and it, and it was cool with our team uh, but it was one of those things to me everything starts kind of be kind of coming and sounding the same mm-hmm. so for me I kind of take a different approach and I just say guys look we're all in this together I mean I keep it super simple <laughs> and I say we're all in this together and I say if I don't do my job you don't have a job if you don't do your job I don't have a job I said just because I own this place doesn't mean I don't work here right and I'm here every day and I'm working so I said, if I don't go sell, you don't have a paycheck. <laughs> it's that simple. If you sure. don't go make the signs and make them right and the graphics right and hang them right, guess what? I don't have a paycheck. So right. we're all in this together. Um, even when we interview someone that comes on new, we, we straight up will tell them, you know, hey, we, we've done this multiple times. And it's worked out really well where we, we ask them to do kind of a trial. And we try to have them come in like at certain times for two or three hours. So they don't have to necessarily leave their job. Right. Say, right. come in for two, three hours. Hey, work with us, you know, three or four days. Uh, see what you think. We'll see what we think. And then we'll make a decision. And it works out really well. We pay them cash for it. We just say, we'll pay you some cash to come in and do it. Uh, but the thing we like about that is we tell them straight up. We say, guys, look, we're we're going to be with you more than I probably will see my own kids. Because right. we're here 40 to 50 hours a week. Right. So if I don't like you, Travis, and you don't like me, how do you think that's going to go? Right. <laughs> or if our team doesn't like each other... How's that gonna go throughout the week? We're gonna eventually start hating that, hating life, hating each other, and, and the job, this the, place stinks. Everything, yeah, yeah, this place is terrible. You know, so I know that's very basic and simple, and I, it's probably not the best answer. But I can just tell you, for me, as far as leading and, and building leaders, I just tell them think outside the box. You know, try to be a problem solver. Um, and we've had people that I have moved up the ranks here pretty fast because they do those simple things. Right. Um, I'll be right here for them. I'll answer any questions. I'll help build them up. But I just am like, just show up. I mean, if you, you know, I like, I'll give you a prime example. One of my good buddies, Brad Beckham, um, 
he's with O'Reilly Automotive. Okay. And he is now the new CEO of O'Reilly. Brad's the same age as me. He's 46 years old. Brad has zero college education, and he started behind the counter at 16 years old. He's now the CEO of O'Reilly Automotive, one of the hugest corporations in the United States. Right. They're massive. And people think, well, how do you do that? And I said, it was simple. And they go, well, what do you mean simple? And I said, well, it was simple. He was honest. He worked his butt off. <laughs> and he moved up the ranks. Right. And he and he, he saw opportunity, and he started applying. I mean, and he moved two or three times, but he saw the opportunities, and he started putting the applications in. And he moved up the ranks. Um so I tell people the same thing here. I go, if you show up, <laughs> you care about infant yeah. graphics, you engage in infant graphics, and you actually want to improve infant graphics, you're going to be here a long time, and I'm going to pay you very well. Wow. So that's simple, I guess. <laughs> yeah, years ago, I was with Cracker Barrel. I was a GM then. And, yeah. And back when it was not as corporate as it is now, uh-huh. but the the CEO of then, yeah. he started as a dishwasher. Yeah. You know, and so it just yeah. went through the same way. So it's, it's really deal, cool man. to see those stories. So It's cool. Um. So just the last thing, so how do you continue? So you have a lot of people that look up to look to you for yeah. provide their income, provide yeah. for their family, mm-hmm. um, uh, whatever it be. So how do you continue to feed yourself because you're busy? Mm-hmm. How do you continue to feed yourself to be a better leader each and every day? Uh, for me, probably every day. Uh, I mean, obviously, we, we attend James River, so we're heavily involved in church, and I... I really, I really feel the Lord has gifted, given me a gift, um, in in sales and just in how I approach life. And I also, I don't, I don't do much reading. I know that's crazy. A lot of people are like, oh, are you, what books do you read? <laughs> I don't read books. I know it's crazy, but I just they they drive me nuts. Uh, I'm too, I'm too active. I'm too. I gotta go. I gotta go. Uh, I'm very active, and I like to move fast. Um, so for me, I follow certain people, like you said, on, on social media, and I'll read tidbits of things mm-hmm. that they say. But I would say for me in developing is probably my the mentors, uh, gotcha. meeting with them. I, I try to meet with them about once a quarter. Uh, I usually meet with about three people a year. Okay. Um, and and it just it really feeds me a lot, if that makes sense. Just yeah. Sometimes it's not even talking leadership. We'll just sit down and just have coffee or just lunch or whatever it may them. be you and can... just be like, hey, yeah. what's been going on in your world? Yeah. What's been going on in my world? Um but that's kind of my deal, and it, and it's hard because you, you know, as a leader, period, or as an owner, for sure, uh, you've got a lot of weight on your shoulders, and you, right. you know, when COVID hit, it was pretty crazy, and obviously, the world was shutting down, and we actually thrived. It was shocking, but we thrived, and we we adjusted really quick, um, because it was, you know, well, are you. You know, an actual business that can stay open or not. Right. I can't remember what they even called it now. I right. tried to forget it all. Uh, no, you know, was, yeah. uh, but they had a word for that, I know. And, and so it was kind of a, yeah, whatever. And so we, we didn't know. But then the city of Springfield calls the next day after they announced it. And they said, hey, we need signage, like, all over the place. <laughs> we need COVID testing. In. We need this. We need the parks. Like, they're closed six feet apart. You know, I said, I guess we're essential. That's what it's essential. called. That's what so I said, said, I guess we're essential. So we started doing that, and then we started cutting face masks and things like that and, and getting yeah, in and shifting. That, yeah. um, but something else I did do is I grabbed our team immediately because, I mean, the news was just breaking like right, crazy. Right. And I grabbed our team, and I said, guys, here's the deal. I said, we have X amount of people on this team, and I was just honest. I mean, I've always been honest with our team. And I said, we have X amount of people. Here's the deal. I said, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not going to take a paycheck for two to three months myself. I said, I'm not going to take any money out of this company. And, but I said, but... I can keep all of you, and I think we can all float this boat together, but we got to cut salaries. And I said, we got to cut payroll and cut it across the board. I said, if I don't do that, I'm going to lay you off and you won't have a job. <laughs> I'd um, rather cut you and hopefully keep you and hopefully keep income coming your way versus, hey, um, I can't keep you. You know. So luckily our team, we only had to do that for about a month maybe, um, and then we got it all back to them. We kept track. And eventually oh, yeah. I was able wow. to get the money back to them once, you came, saw. once the world started coming back to life. Um, but we had about a month of that. And luckily my team was fantastic. And I just said, guys, any idea goes. I mean, we sat in here and it was just, you know, what do you got? And mm-hmm. people were like, I think we can make face shields. I think we could do this. I think we could make this. I think we can make, you know, the acrylics for the bank tellers. And, the, you know, all the stuff that you start seeing kind of, they were like, we could cut this. We could grab that. So I just started buying supplies like crazy. And we shifted immediately and started getting into that. And wow. it just took off like crazy. And then finally the world kind of came back. Right. And then it was back to normal. But but we had to shift, and I think everybody did. I mean, everybody 
that was a, that was a crazy time. I mean, especially as a leader, um, had a lot of prayer during that time, <laughs> a lot of a lot yeah. of time. Um, you know, it was just crazy. It was just a crazy time in the world, obviously. But it, but we made it through it, and and honestly, we've we've thrived. I mean, we in twenty twenty during COVID, we had about five to six. I think it was about six employees uh, or team members on our team, and now we're at fifteen. So we went from twenty twenty to that to twenty twenty three. And, you know, here we are, 15 team members, and, and it's the largest we've ever been. And this was the best year we've ever had. Nice. Uh, ever. And we're looking to go much further next year. I mean, we've got yeah. some big things on the horizon uh, for next year and some big jobs that are in the hopper coming in that we know of that are going to be huge. Okay. So we're excited about 2024. It's going to be a good year. Appreciate the time. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's always great get to know about other businesses and what for they sure. do and, and uh, just hearing some of yeah. Always, you know, known you for quite a few yeah, years, but for sure. to hear these different aspects, different yeah, sides. It's fun. Awesome. So it's appreciate fun. it. Thanks, Trav. All right. Thanks, sir. Appreciate you. All right.